creme brulee is a simple yet elegant dessert that's actually really easy to make. It's just four simple ingredients that transforms into a creamy custard. Plus, I'll show you how to make the caramelized topping with or without a torch. For this recipe, I like to use whole vanilla beans. The small pot is packed with hundreds of tiny seeds that's going to intensify the sweet taste and aroma of the custard. I know that the pods can get a little bit expensive, so as a good substitute, you could use two teaspoons of vanilla extract or vanilla bean paste. To extract the seeds from inside the pod, all you need to do is cut a shallow line down the center, take the back of the knife, and just scrape the seeds out. Whoa, as you can see, these tiny black specks, they're concentrated with vanillin flavor compounds. That's just gonna add so much dimension to the dessert. I usually get about an eighth of a teaspoon from one vanilla bean pod. For a luxurious texture, I'm going to use heavy cream. It contains 36% fat, which is going to give a smooth mouthfeel without feeling too dense. Add one and three quarter cups to a medium saucepan. Add the scraped vanilla seeds. And make sure to add the vanilla bean pod because it still has a ton of flavor and we want to infuse it into the cream. Now we're going to go heat it over at the stove. Heat on medium low until the mixture reaches 180 degrees, about 10 to 12 minutes. Stir occasionally and make sure not to boil. The cream is heated to 180 degrees or scalding, just below simmering. Any higher, and it's gonna to start to separate and get clumpy. The reason we do this is to infuse more vanilla bean flavor. Once it reaches the desired temperature, we're gonna take it off the heat and let it sit and steep for five more minutes. It's also gonna to help to drop the temperature a little bit so it doesn't curdle the eggs when we add it later. To create a softer pudding-like texture, I only use egg yolks. They contain 16% protein, which is gonna coagulate just enough to thicken the custard, but not make it completely firm. We need five egg yolks. To separate the egg, just crack it on its side, and then have a bowl to catch the whites, and try to crack it down the center so that you can use the shell to just rock the yolk back and forth until there's no more egg white attached. And then just transfer the egg yolk into another bowl. Be really careful not to make contact with the edge of the shell or it could cut into the yolk and break it. Another method that we used to use when I was working at a bakery is to crack the whole egg into your hand. This is a little bit more gentle and you could really feel if you've gotten all of that egg white removed and separated. I also don't like to waste the egg whites. You could also use it as a quick breakfast scramble the next morning, or you can make another dessert like French macaroons or meringue. I'm going to whisk in the granulated sugar into the egg yolks. This process is going to slow down coagulation so that when the warm cream is added, it's not going to curdle. To the five egg yolks, add a half cup of granulated sugar. Whisk gently just until it's combined. You don't want to do this process too early and let it sit, otherwise the sugar is going to bind that moisture in the egg yolk and it's going to cause the uncooked egg proteins to start to curdle up. Now I'm going to strain the warm cream through a fine mesh sieve. This is going to remove any clumps or particles so that it's nice and smooth. Just slowly pour it over the bowl. Then I scrape the bottom of the sieve against the side of the bowl. We can't add hot cream to the eggs, otherwise they're going to coagulate. So instead, we're going to use a process called tempering. We're going to add a small portion of the warm cream to the eggs at a time. Going to use a one third cup amount, pour some into the eggs and whisk at the same time. This prevents hot spots in the eggs. Gently mix just till it's combined. Add another one third cup, whisking till it's nice and smooth. Now that we've tempered the eggs, we can safely add the remaining amount of cream so that it doesn't get curdled. In a medium saucepan or kettle, add four cups of water and bring it to a boil. This will be used to make the water bath. 
I use four ounce sized ramekins for the custards, but if you like a more shallow dish, you can use that too, but just know that it's gonna cook a lot quicker. I also placed the ramekins inside a nine by 13 inch metal baking pan. You don't wanna use glass because once you add the hot water, there's a chance that it will shatter. So metal's the way to go. Now add into each ramekin a half cup of the custard. I like to stir the custards just really gently so that I can distribute all of those lovely speckled vanilla bean seeds. Now if you see any little air bubbles on the surface, you're going to want to pop them either with a little toothpick or the tines of a fork, but really there's not much on here, so we're good to go. Now you're going to create a bain-marie, which is a hot water bath that surrounds the ramekins. You wanna make sure that the ramekins are away from the side of the pan, and then slowly add the hot water. The water should come about halfway up the sides. The water bath is going to create this gentle environment for baking when it's in the oven because the water never goes above boiling. You're gonna get a nice consistent custard texture throughout and it's gonna be smooth and creamy. Bake until the creme brulee is set, but still has a slight wiggle in the center. About 30 to 40 minutes. If using an instant read thermometer, the temperature should read at least 175 degrees in the center. Place the cups on a cooling rack and dry the sides. The custards have cooled down to room temperature for about 45 to 60 minutes. This is really important because it allows for carryover cooking and once we add it to the refrigerator to chill, it's gonna prevent too much steam from building and condensation on the surface. Wrap each ramekin tightly with plastic wrap. Now we're going to chill these in the refrigerator for three hours to help the custard set or you could leave them in there for up to three days if you want to make them in advance. As you can see, the custards are completely set. And right before I add the sugar on top, if you see any excess moisture on the surface, use a paper towel to just blot it because the moisture is going to prevent that sugar from hardening. Now I'm going to add one teaspoon of granulated sugar to each ramekin. Just sprinkle it on top, then just tilt and roll it around to evenly cover the surface. Now for the fun part. I have a handheld culinary torch that I'm going to use to caramelize the surface. Hold it three to four inches away from the surface of the creme brulee, and then just use a slow circular motion going from the edges to the center. I found that using the handheld torch is the best method for browning because it gives you the most control. If you don't have a culinary torch, you can use these methods. Set the oven rack about six inches away from the upper heating element. Boil on high until the surface is golden brown and bubbling, about four to six minutes. Place a stainless steel spoon that you don't care much about over the flame of a gas stove set on high. Let it heat about five to six minutes. Then lightly press the bottom of the spoon onto the sugar surface, slowly dragging it in a circular motion until it's golden brown. Let the creme brulee sit at room temperature for about five minutes to allow that sugar crust to harden. Or you could place it in the refrigerator for up to an hour and still get that nice crispy texture if you wanna serve it later. Right before serving, I like to add some garnish to just make it a little bit more fancy. Add a dollop of whipped cream, just a little bit on the edge. Some fresh mint leaves to add a pop of color and juicy raspberries. These look so pretty. <laughs> if you're looking for more fancy French desserts, check out my cream puffs right here. I love making it for special occasions. I hope you enjoyed learning the science behind creme brulee, and if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot when you do. Now it's time to dig in. Ooh, it's so crispy. Mm, so good.